If you love Jesus, can you please stand to your feet? You love Jesus. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet with your Bible. Say with me, I love Jesus. Say it confidently. Say, I love Jesus. Say it with all your heart. Say, I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Please open your Bible quickly to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrew chapter 10. Hebrew chapter 10. If you're there, can you say amen? amen? Please, somebody should read for me verse 23. Verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Take it again. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Mark eleven twenty three. Mark eleven twenty three. Mark eleven. 23. The book of Mark 11, 23. If you see it, you can read for me. I tell you, I tell you truth. If anyone say to this mountain, uh huh. Okay. Mm. okay. Read for me from. King James or New King James. Verily I say unto you, whosoever will say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea. Okay. Mm, mm, yes. He shall have whatsoever he says. Let's pray. Our Father, we are grateful to you this morning. We thank you for your word. We ask that you breathe into it and make it to be alive today to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please sit down. We are still considering a series on the power of faith. Someone say the power of faith. Someone say the power of faith. We are still considering a series on the power of faith. Today, we are going to consider briefly, put your faith to work. Can you tell somebody? Please tell somebody, put your faith to work. Tell him confidently, put your faith to work. Now, there is power in faith confession. There is something called faith confession. But beyond the power of faith confession, there is more power in faith action. Now, there are a lot of confession and affirmations. I believe it. I receive it. I receive it. I believe it. That is good. Fantastic. Fantastic. There is power in your confession. Positive confessions. In the midst of any circumstances. In the face of negative doctor's report. In the face of the ravaging coronavirus that is shutting down a lot of economies and countries. I was watching a video yesterday about the happenings in Italy. You know, Italy now is totally shut down. Totally. No school, no church, no funeral, no marriage. All the people that die within this period, 
They didn't die very well. No marriage, nothing, nothing. Everyone will stay in their houses. No movement, except for essential duties, doctors, people that sell food, and all the rest of them. I watched a video yesterday about a young man in Sicily, in the face of all that, he brought out his trumpet and began to blow the trumpet. And everybody had to come out of their houses. And then they told it to become music. And everybody was singing and dancing. Why some people were in their room with gloomy and sad countenances? This man changed the situation around regardless of the circumstances he is passing through. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't know what you are passing through today. The fact is, if you trust in God, if you believe in God, what you are doing is handling your circumstances over to him to handle. And let me pray for anyone who will say amen, God will handle your situation. If your amen is bigger than that, receive it right now. Yeah. What are you confessing? Are you confessing negatively? Or are you confessing positively? Listen to me, church. The Bible says there is a measure of faith that is given to everyone. All of us. Read for me Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Romans 12, 3. Romans 12, 3, fast. Or give it to me on the screen, please. Romans 12, 3. Romans 12, 3. Uh -huh. By faith. Mm. Thank you very much. He said, for I said through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. What we are saying is, everyone, everyone that comes to Jesus and becomes saved, God has dealt with everyone a measure of faith. So you are not empty of faith. It means that as you are sitting there, God has given you a measure of faith. Of course, I love the way Baba Umopa used to say it. He would say we might be age mate, but we are not grace mate. Now, the fact is, for everyone who has come under the umbrella of grace, God has dealt a measure of faith to you. But listen to me. Your faith is strengthened by feeding it on the word of God and by exercising it. Your faith becomes strengthened. That is why you will see some who are born again at the same time. They came to the same crusade. They call for they call for altar call at the same time. They join the church at the same time, but their growth differs. Their understanding differs. The way they trust and believe in God differs. You know why? Because this one is strengthening, growing. Circumstances is no longer determining what he is doing for God. He has made up his mind. He is sold out to God. Brethren, I challenge you this morning that you have a measure of faith. I have a measure of faith. Now, what are you doing with the faith God has given to you? It may be to remember the story of the servant that were giving talents. To one, they gave five. To the other, two. To the other, one. The one that they gave five, traded with it and multiplied it. The one that had two, traded with it, multiplied it. The one that had one, you know what he did? He dug the ground, hid the talent, and then the owner of the talent came back asking for account. 
You know what the young man said? He said, you like to reap where you know so. And so because of that, I dug the ground. I hid the talent. He said, if you had known you are not going to use what I've given you, you would have let me know if I have given it to, he collected it from him first and gave it to another. Brethren, brethren, what are you doing with God has given to you? What is your faith action? What are your faith confessions? Are you looking at the negatives or you are looking at the positive? Now from today, begin to look at the positives in the name of Jesus. Number one, listen to these four, four points. Number one, faith confession is positive confession. Somebody say positive confession. Say it louder. Say it very well. Say it very, very well. Say it with all confidence. Say it very, very well. There have been a lot of people who have come against positive confessions. A lot of pastors have spoken against positive confessions. They say, um, all, these, um, all these motivational speakers. All right. Let me explain to you. There are people who are called motivational speakers. You aspire to desire, you desire, you desire to aspire, and aspire to aspire, aspire to aspire. See, keep aspiring. Keep aspiring. If you don't walk, your aspiration will be a pipe dream. Keep, 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 keep aspiring. All right? Keep aspiring. I aspire to desire. My desire of aspire. Aspire will not aspire in the name of Jesus. Keep aspiring. The fact is, the fact is, most of the people who are great in life, they put their faith to work. Listen to me. A champion is not made in the ring. A champion is made in the training ground. Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world, is retired now. He only ran for three minutes. All the, all, all the Olympics gold medals he won, every race he ran was for three minutes. And out of that three minutes, he made 119 million USD. Three minutes. That he ran the races. His total income was 119 million USD. I can use that kind of money. Hallelujah. But he trained for 20 plus years. There is nothing like overnight success. Every success you think are overnight have been working uh, on, on, the, on the night. On the night and overnight. Walk. Tap somebody, walk. Keep confessing. Tap her for me. Keep confessing. Keep confessing. Keep, confessing. Keep walking. If you sleep, if you are a sleeper, if you sleep from morning till night, night till morning, morning till night, you have slept off the major productive years of your life. Brethren, faith confessions is powerful, but beyond faith confession you need to back it up with action. Somebody say amen. amen. But let me say to you, positive confession is faith confessions. Most of you are so negative. You see problem in every solution. You see difficulty in every circumstances. You wake up in the morning, like our father used to say, you greet him and say, good morning, how are you? He said, no problem yet. No trouble yet. 
Anyone who will say no trouble yet, trouble will come to you when it will come to you. Say amen. <laughs> Listen to me, church. Positive confession is essential to function of our faith. Positive confession is essential to the functioning of our faith. Stop being negative. Look at somebody in the eyes. Look at him in the eye for me. Look at him in the eye for me. Tell him for me, stop being negative. Tell him confidently, stop being negative. You know, there are some of us as mothers and fathers. What we confess over our children are negatives. I remember when I was growing up, growing up, very close to our house, we have a woman. She has three boys, no girl. All of you that don't have a girl child, I pity you. All of you that all your children are male, ekanem, I pity you. <laughs> you might not understand yet. Female children are the best. Should I, should, I, should I prove it to you? If you, have, if you have a female child, the chance of you being a grandfather on time is higher. I should prove it to you. Uh, Daniel, stand. When are you going to get married? Eh? When are you going to get married? Very soon. Ngozi is your elder sister. You know, sister. Is she married? She don't born? Do you see what I'm saying? If I am Daniel's father, and I'm waiting for grandchildren, and it is Daniel I'm waiting for, I will wait for a long time. Eh? Very soon. <laughs> Should I prove it to you again? My younger sister, my middle younger sister, her first child is as tall as I am. And in university. My, child, my own daughter. <laughs> eh? By faith. It's in JSS. Uh, my eldest brother, my eldest brother, his first child, he's just entering university. My your elder sister, the last born, is in university. I should prove it again. So with all these points of mine, <laughs> panel of judges and debaters, I've proved to you that female children, all right, male children, I'm a male now, so male children are fantastic too, amen? But look at what I'm saying. This woman, every day, every day, she's a Yoruba woman, every day, she will be cursing these children. You know, if you are trying to learn Yoruba, it is curse. <laughs> eh? It is curse. If you have been to Lagos or anywhere. If they are trying to teach you Yoruba language, na course. That's the first thing you are going to learn. All right? So every time this woman will be cursing these children. Oloriburuku thief, ham robber. Ham robber. You guys will not amount to anything. Imagine she is saying that. My own mama will be hearing and say, you will be great. You will be great. I'll say, mama, why are you saying this all the time? He said, because there are demons that are around, stamping every statement somebody is saying. I don't know if, how true that is. So, and truly, truly, the three children turn out to become harm robber. 
One was killed right at the doorstep of their home. And the last born that survived, he is now an Agbero. Brethren, speak faith, confession, positive in the life of your children. I do that a lot for my children. No? I do that a lot. I say, you'll be great in the name of Jesus. When they're going to school, I lay my hand on them. I say, you are, you are blessed. You are the best. You are great. And so sometimes if you, if you project fear into them, they will reject it. They will reject it because of what they keep hearing. Praise the Lord. Are you going to change today? You say, hey, I don't know mathematics. Mathematics is too, too, too difficult. That is why you don't know square root. That's why you don't know square root. I cannot do it. Uh, that is why you are still at this level. You can do it. I can do all things through Christ that do all strengthen me. Raise your right hand up. Say, oh Lord, from today, my confession shall be positive. From today, from today, my confession is positive. I reject, I reject every projection of fear that is working against my faith. From today, my faith shall be positive. Say amen. amen. Number two. Number two. What you receive from God is tied to your confessions. Let somebody read for me that Mark eleven twenty three 23 again. Let's look at it quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. What you receive from God is tied to your confession. Okay. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say, look at this. Listen. Whosoever shall do what? Say. If there is a mountain before you and you speak to it, look at what Jesus says. Be removed. Be cast out into the sea. And you will not doubt in your heart. Mm -hmm. It shall have whatsoever he said. Listen to me, church. Your receiving from God is tied. Is tied to your faith confessions. Tight. See, start speaking it, even when things are not as they should be. Start speaking it. Start saying it. I will be great. I will be great. I will be great. And every other person will be laughing at you. Say, you see, see him. I've told you the story when I was pastoring one church. That the Elijah transformed me to. And then the church was not very big. So I was to make the church grow now and become big. And the church was located on top of a three bedroom, a three apartment inside inside. The first day I entered that church, I told myself, I say, how many I met three three one woman one man, one youth, and three, three children, about six, with four benches. And you know this pupil, they have this long rope around like that, wood. The first day I came into the church, I told them we are moving the church from here. They all look at me and say, Pastor, our former pastor ran away. The former pastor you are taking over from, the pioneer pastor, he ran away. I don't even know, Reverend Okiti. Yes, sir. He ran away. When things became very hard, he ran. And so I got there. I look at it. I said, ah, hey, this is a church. Oh. I have no pastor who did not even start with any member. Who did not even start with any building. So when I saw it, I saw it. Ah, 
I said, no, this church. We are moving this church away from here. The WM president is the president. She's the treasurer. She's the member. Because now only one woman now. She came to me and said, Pastor, you are young. We like you. And you are handsome too. Amen. Though at that time my neck was very long. Well, it's okay. My length is a little bit uh, not as long as it used to be. Thank God for our fathers. <laughs> now, I said, we're moving the church from here. Holodan said, they cannot, they, they cannot move this church. Then I began to work out in the area, do evangelism. I saw a lot of young people in those areas who weren't going to school. So I called one of them. I said, ah, why are you guys not going to school? You don't like that? He said, there's no admission, no. Ah, I said, opportunity. I had a friend who was a lecturer. I said, please, my friend, can you please just give me one admission? Just one. Just one. He said, why? I said, ah, all these children that are roaming around, they just need to have one who have a testimony of admission that is done by an Assembly of God pastor. <laughs> Men and brethren, I carry this. He's a big boy now, Tunde. I carry him to Akumba, 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 the university in Akumba. They gave him the admission. He came back. He told all his friends, Assemblies of God pastor is doing admission for people. <laughs> ah, men and brethren, three or four Sundays after, I, I grew to 20 something members. Ah, now, now it is working. Then, when I have 20 something members, I say, ah, okay, the church is growing now. I raised money. You know, today, I raised some money. The money was very small. I emptied my account, joined them to it. I ran to my section leader, Reverend Ame. Tell him, say, sir, our church, I didn't tell him the majority of the money that my own. I said, our church has raised this amount of money. He said, ah, that church that the former pastor ran away, you raised this amount of money. He called the sections together. They raised more money for us <laughs> and gave me. He came to Baba, knelt down, collect money from the district. We bought a land. That land was one around 10,000 in those days. Now, that land is about six, seven million now. Look at what I'm saying. Before you know it, the church grew. People came, and I have bankers, I have uh, people, and I became a... So the woman came back to me again. He said, Pastor, I like your faith. I said, which faith? He said, the faith that saw six members and inside, inside, and believed that we can come out of this and move to our own permanent site. I do my life like this. I said, ah, hey. I said, not only that, more is coming in the name of Jesus. More is coming in the name of Jesus. He said, Pastor, no, I just want to let you know that we appreciate you and we're not asking you to give us more temptation. <laughs> brethren, brethren, nothing is impossible to him that believes. You might look at the circumstances around you. Your background, you look at your background. Somebody said you are not on the ground because of your background. You are on the ground because you choose to be on the ground. Stop being negative. Start confessing because your confession is tied to what you will receive. Raise your right hand and say after me. Say, hold oh Lord, I confess. So I receive. I confess, so I receive. My promotion, I receive. Financial breakthrough, I receive. Sound health, I receive. Can you say loud amen? amen? Number three, your confession must agree with the word of God. I'm not talking about philosophy here. Your confession must agree with what? What must you with what? If your confession does not agree with the word of God, it is not faith speaking. To confess means to agree with, to say the same thing, 
Let your conversation and your confession harmonize. Brethren, your confession must agree with the word of God. And that is why it is important for you to know what God says concerning every situation in your life. That is why it is important for you to do what? To know what God is saying about every situation in your life. Listen to me. Look at me, church. I told my, my wife and boy traveled. They traveled. And the Bobo has gone to write common entrance. Amen. You know, I've told you before, let the two of them go to boarding school so that I can be free. Amen. So it's coming close to reality. Hallelujah. And she said she had a revelation that there was an accident. A very big word. A very big word. And then there was an opportunity. Mommy Alaji was to travel. So I said, if you enter any of our father's car, you can never be involved in accident. Though, because the grace they carry can never be involved in accident. Amen? So I said, go. Unfortunately for her, Mama was not going again, so she has to go enter ATM. Listen to what I'm saying. The day we were going to travel, we were inside the room together. I said, see, if you remain small, for accidents to meet you guys, you will have passed. If accident will happen before you get there, it will have happened either before when you have passed or before you get there. She said, Amen. I pray. So they went. Then when they got to Badon, they called me and said, Ah, that your prayer worked. Oh. I said, Yes, my prayer they work now. Amen. Amen. That your prayer worked. He said, do you know, a trailer failed break, and it was at our back. And they were telling the driver, this trailer that is coming with this speed, this trailer that is coming with this speed, it will jam us all. The driver said, hey, you don't go jam us. And everybody talked to him. He talked to them and told them, he said, come on, get out. I've been driving since 1962. And an old man. He said, is there any one of you here who is up to, who, who, has, who has been born in 62? He said, it's not a matter of driving 62, trailer there our back home. Fortunately for them, fortunately for them, the trailer found a way, very tiny, very little, branch at this other side, and went to go and hit something else. And then even the driver was shaking. I said, Papa, I thought you said you have been driving for 1962. He said, I didn't know that this thing is failing break. He's failing break. He's failing break. My wife called me and she was shaking. She was shaking. I said, No shaking. Someone said, No shaking. No shaking. Says, No shaking. No shaking. See, see, what I'm saying to you is. For every situation you have, get a word from God for it. Do you know the assurance I have? God gave me a long time ago, he said, I will give men for you and people for your life. And that is the assurance. Anytime I am traveling, anytime I'm going anywhere, I will, tell, I will, tell, I will remind God of the word he has said. He said, you will give men for me and people for my life. When you read the Bible, it is, it is logos. It is general for everyone. But sometimes when you are reading the Bible, some first will leap out to you. That is when it becomes rema. Get a rema for your situation. Get a rema for everything you are passing through. Know the promises of God concerning every situation you are passing through. I tell you, the devil cannot contend with it. Let your faith agree with the word of God. Number four, 
The last one. Take faith action. Not only faith confession. We must go further than speaking word of faith. We must take faith action. These are actions that agree with the faith statement we have made. Literally, acting on God's word is promises. When you act in faith, miracle happens. Act on the promise. Get the blueprint of God concerning your situation. Are you looking for a job? Get what God is saying concerning it. Do you want to start a business? Get God's direction for the business he wants you to do. Do Are you looking for a wife to marry? Don't only look at tall, fair, beautiful, pointed nose, educated. There's a friend of mine who was looking for a wife. He said, every wife I marry must be a graduate. She must be a graduate. And that is his, that is, that is, is, that is, is, I asked him, you are a pastor? He said, yes. You are not looking at somebody that can help your ministry. He said, no, leave that one. Uh, I want a graduate. I asked him, why do you want a graduate? He said, his uncle trained somebody in school. And the lady disappointed and ran away. So she mar- he married another one and trained her in school. And every morning, he calls the woman graduate. You know, people call sweetheart, uh, my dear, my love. But the name the husband gave the wife is graduate. So any morning he wants to agree, he say, graduate, come here. And the boy stays, the young man stays in their house. So every morning the uncle would wake up, he say, is graduate awake? Has graduate cooked soup? Has graduate done this? So he make up his mind and say, hey, when I marry two, I must marry a graduate. So that when I marry the graduate, I will also call my wife graduate. If that is what you are looking at, fa 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 fa, fa 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 fa. I'm not saying you should not marry an educated person, but marry the child of God. Oh, are you a sister who is looking for a wife? He must have the six six six, six figure, six pack. And six what? Eh? Six cars. Thank you. Okay. They say, see, you are looking for the number 666. What you are looking for is a brother who has six pack. How many of you now here get six pack? Daniel, you get six pack. <laughs> who else is there who gets six pack? You look like somebody who gets six pack. But if you get six pack, do you have six figure income? Six figure income. Six figure income and six cars. Your father, no get six pack. Your father, no get six figure income. He no get six car. But you want to marry a man, and that is your condition. Fa 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 fa. Brethren, brethren. From this time until the rest of the year, the Lord will honor your faith. Yes. Is that the best you can say? Yes. Is that the best you can say? Yes. Is that the best amen you can say? Yes. Is that the best amen you can say? Yes. See. Where you have, we have not reached, your children will surpass it. Yeah. There are some of us who are going to be, who have been doing Omungo in America and London. Ah, Mama Chiwe, you don't believe? Say amen. amen. Let me conclude with this. I've told you guys before, it is not, Bro Friday, it is not only. Mama Chiwe that will go and do a mugo in America. Say you know. Say you know. I've told my children, treasure and precious. Listen to me. When precious born, when treasure born, 
thank God she's a girl. So she's going to, when this boy is still growing, she will have married. I want her to marry on time so that I can become a grandfather. That's one of my dreams. I'll be a grandfather and everybody will call me grandpa. See, that's, I, that's my dream. Oh. That's my dream. I want to become a grandpa. And so I've been dreaming it in their minds. See, make me a grandpa. Legally. <laughs> so make a talk and wear. I told my wife, I said, see, when treasure born, you can go and do the omugo. But when Papa born, he's my turn. He's my turn, oh. You know why I said it's my turn? A father, a father had three, three, three children and the mother. The first one born. The mama went to Australia to go and do a mugo. Second one born. He went to London to go and do a mugo. The third one born. He spa- she was packing her bag. The, ma- the father provoked. I said, you have got the first one. Got the second one. This is my turn. He said, ah, what are you going to be doing? He said, okay, I can bring my wife along. He said, how, oh, what is it? What, what are you going to do? It? He said, my wife will bathe the child. I will go and throw away the water. Oh, now, Mugo, is it not? Is it only you now who you know how to do a Mugo? No, now. Father, take your right. <laughs> Confess positively. Take faith action. I will all go and do a Mugo in Jesus' name. Bad on your head. Bad on your head and let's pray. Bad on your head and let us pray. I want you to pray this morning. Father, give me the grace to make my faith to work. Give me the grace to make my faith to work. Give me the grace to make my faith to work. Give me the grace to make my faith to work. Faith is like a seed that produces harvest of miracles. Faith is demonstrated in desperate situations. Ask the law. I don't know your desperation right now. Is it a doctor's report? Is it a family problem? Is it things are not working as you are expecting? Keep saying positive things. Let it agree with the word of God for you. Keep trusting God that you will see better days. Better days in faith. Better days. Better days. Better days. Open your mouth and pray. Use these two minutes to pray. Ask the Lord, Father, Father, Father. You say, I can say to this mountain, be moved. Be cast out. And my faith in you will produce the movement of the mountains. I speak to my mountains today. Open your mouth, pray. I don't know the mountain. I don't know, is it mockery of men? Is it reproaches of men? Is it that your children are not doing well? Is it that you are sick, seasonal sickness? Whatever it is, speak to it right now, right now, right now, right now. God is here to work miracles. God is here to give you what you want. God is here to honor your faith. God is here to give you the reward of faith. Ask the Lord, Father, 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 I put my faith in you. Father, give me the reward of faith. Make my faith to produce an harvest of miracles over my children, over the work of my hands, over every glory. We give you all the glory. All the honor be to you. Give us a reward of faith. Make our faith to produce an harvest. Give us grace to be able to, to be who you want us to be, to the glory of your name alone. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' perfect name, we have prayed. Can you say three loud, amen?